may wonder why we do meditation at all. What's the purpose of meditation, let alone transmission meditation? Well, the fundamental purpose of meditation of whatever kind is to bring the person, the man or woman, into contact with and eventually in total union with his or her soul. Each one of us is a soul, individualized aspect of one great soul, which incarnates over and over and over again, sometimes as a man, sometimes as a woman, sometimes succession of men or succession of women. In this way, the evolutionary process, the evolution of consciousness takes place. The first stage of this contact is made through meditation. So any meditation of whatever kind is a method more or less scientific of bringing about soul contact. Once that contact is achieved, it may take several lives in the beginning to achieve a real contact with the soul. In the first instance, the soul who for long ages has paid little attention to its reflection, that's the man or woman on the physical plane, sees that at long, long last, the personality of the man or woman is beginning to respond to the impress, the uh, energy of the soul. And when that takes place, the soul speeds up the process, stimulates its vehicle, and brings it to meditation of some kind. In that first instance, it might be very slight, very fleeting, just the odd nod at it, you know? But eventually, will come a life which is given very strong, serious attention to meditation. In this way, the soul gradually grips its vehicle, the man or woman, and gradually, by dint of stimulus of its own spiritual energies, turns the individual towards itself and its purpose. Every soul comes into incarnation with a set of purposes. The fundamental purpose behind every incarnation is to create right human relationships. And if you haven't managed to do that, forget about the other ones, because that's the first and foremost purpose of the soul. The soul is perfect. The soul on its own plane doesn't need any kind of expansion of its consciousness or awareness. But in its reflection state on the physical plane, in the personality of the man or woman, it is going through a process of gradual perfection in matter. So the soul comes into matter and through incarnation after incarnation gradually turns that matter into light until the body of the completely achieved master adept is a body of light. This is the magical action of the soul in this long journey of evolution. Every incarnation allows the individual to draw to itself magnetically more and more matter of subatomic nature, which is light. And gradually that body becomes the body of light. That is the body of the achieved master, who is then free from the pool of matter forever. One other process contributes to this royal road to spiritual achievement, and that is the process we call service. So meditation and service, you will find, are the way par excellence to achieve a growing awareness of your soul and of your purpose and a gradual unification between yourself and the soul. As soon as you make contact with the soul, you make contact with the energy of the soul. Now these energies entering the reflection, that's the man or woman, disturb the status quo. These are powerful spiritual energies and if not used in service, can cause a stasis on the physical body. And so it is better if you don't want to serve not to meditate because you're going to 
involve yourself in energies which, if not used in service, will simply turn back on yourself and cause a stasis, physical, emotional, mental. Now, many people today are standing on the very edge of discipleship. Whether they know it or not, they have already made a considerable contact with their own soul. And as soon as you make contact with your soul, inevitably you will desire to serve in some way. You become somewhat more altruistic, more responsible, and you see a life as something which you want responsibly to fulfill in service to the world in some way or other. The problem is that people today have to work so hard just to make a living that very many people have no time and no energy, even if they had time, to engage in either meditation or service to any great extent. And precisely for just these people, transmission meditation has been created. In esoteric terms, transmission meditation is the combination of two yogas. Karma yoga, the yoga of service, and laya yoga, which is the yoga of the chakras, the energies. Either is tremendously powerful mode of advancement. Together, they are incredibly powerful. In the hands of the master scientists, this is an entirely safe occupation. The masters know precisely how much energy, at what potency, any individual can safely handle. The masters are the custodians of all the spiritual energies entering the planet. These come from cosmic, from solar, and extraplanetary sources. And they are, therefore, very high in vibration indeed. And if the masters simply sent them into the world as they receive them, they would, for the most part, be too high. They would simply bounce off the mass of humanity and would be of no use. So transmission meditation groups have been formed to act scientifically as a kind of bridging group between the hierarchy of masters on the one hand, who are the custodians of all these energies and of the plan of evolution, and transmit the energies into the world to carry out the plan of evolution, which they know, which they seek to work out through humanity. In this way, the energies are stepped down. A transmission meditation group is really a transformer. In electricity, you have high voltage, 1,000 volts, or even 110 volts, and you put your fingers in it in the wrong place, you can be electrocuted. But if you use transformers, you bring it down to a very easily handleable 1.5 volts, which will light a little torch battery. Something similar occurs in the spiritual field. The energies so high, cosmic and solar and so on, would simply bounce off humanity. Yet, if sent through a group in a scientific manner, they automatically become transformed. The group of transmitters are like a transformer. They simply step down the energies. The energies are sent through the chakras, the force centers in the spine of the individuals, usually through the heart, the throat, and the two head centers, the one between the eyebrows and the one at the top of the head. And in this way, as the energies go through one side and come out the other side, so to speak, they are automatically stepped down. And the people involved in the group have nothing to do with it. They're just simply sitting there. But the energies are then sent out not by the group, but by the masters, to wherever they are needed in the world, which might be to avert a war or to create certain conditions. It might be simply to top up the reservoir of spiritual energy in the world, from which all can drink. Many people think that they should send these energies to wherever there is problems in the world. They could be doing just the very opposite of what is required. While they're trying to send the energies, it could be that Maitre and the Masters are withdrawing energies from these very places to create a vacuum to bring to an end the fighting and the conflict and so on. So 
except that you don't know how to send the energies, that it is a highly scientific, skilled process known only to the masters. Simply hold your attention at the Eisner Center and let them do all the directing. That is the service aspect of transmission meditation. It's a gift. You simply sit there and let the masters send their energy through you. That's all you do. Now, it is not possible to have these great spiritual forces, energies, transmitted scientifically by the master scientists through the chakras without being transformed by them at the same time. So it is the creation of a kind of hothouse, a forcing process, by which means in one year of correct, sustained transmission meditation, you can make the same kind of spiritual advance as in 10, 15, perhaps even 20 years of ordinary meditation. So it's not for everybody. Not everybody wants to become forced along the path. Not everybody wants to be a hothouse grape, however advanced they become. People are lazy, people are frightened, people have all sorts of reasons for not doing transmission meditation. But the first requirement is the desire to serve. And that will only come to you if you are already in some kind of contact with your own soul. Now, no one who was not in contact with their own soul would be interested in transmission meditation. Whether you make use of the energy of the soul, whether you make use of this opportunity to serve is entirely up to you. It will follow from the strength of your commitment in a serious way to the world and the needs of the world and to your response to soul impression and purpose. But it is not possible to come into contact with your soul without desiring to serve because it is the nature of the soul to serve. That's all it knows. It comes into incarnation to serve the plan of evolution of the Logos of our planet. Knows that plan and seeks through its successive incarnations in the physical body of a man or woman to carry out that soul purpose. And so spiritualize matter. That's really what the soul is doing as it comes into incarnation over and over again. We are spiritualizing the matter of our planet, in the first place, the matter of our physical bodies.